an invitation. Live deep. How deeply are you living, friend? How sense deep? How heart and mind deep? Soul deep? Are you experiencing life? Each passing day, passing season? Is it a life wading in the shallows? Or is it being in the marrow of every moment? Of every thought, taste, touch, sight, sound, every heard or uttered word, in the fathoms of every feeling, because below the surface is where the real treasure is buried, a great fortune is to be found. If you've been there, You've discovered the endless riches. If you haven't, you can begin to take yourself into the depths, into the jeweled waters, where every day you can live full, live deep. Welcome to the latest floating poetry broadcast, and thank you for leaning in to show 206, coming to you live from New England, from the deep water coast of Rhode Island. This is your poet, illuminator, and guiding spirit in the poetosphere, Colin Gerdeke, a voice here and elsewhere for living our days more fully, more alively, more poetically, and yes, more deeply. Last week's broadcast, if you were not able to take it in, was through the ether on the realm of the air, from the pure alpine air of the mountains to the bone-dry air of the desert, to the healing salt air of the ocean. That air we breathe, paint in, fly and sing through, sail and deep dive with, where we find clouds and birds, hot air balloons, and the metaphors that speak at times to great lightness of being, to dreaming, even to vanishing. This week, live deep, taking ourselves more deeply into ourselves, into our lives, into the living world and the man-made world around us, from affirming places and ways we may be living deeply, to helping to see and remove the obstacles to going there more or more often, leaving the shallows, to inspiring even more deepening, more full immersion below the surface, well below and beyond the superficial. So, I brought together a uh, a show of cultural commentary, poetry, quotes, anecdotes, and inquiry around this, this theme including sharings from various listeners, friends, and others I invited views and experiences from. We'll come to those. Let's begin with the words of the French-born diarist, essayist, and novelist Anais Nin, who spent the last half of her life in America, author of Delta of Venus, among other works worth knowing about. She said, I must be a mermaid. I have no fear of depths and a great fear of shallow living. From my exhibition of theater on paper, experiential experiential exhibition called Behind the Curtain. This is from the debut spring of 2018 before it traveled on. The Deep Seer. The speed and keenness of his sight are rare and are sure. And what he sees in the deep, he's moved to share, to show the hidden energies that flow, flirt, glint and glow below the surface of the everyday world. We 
Walt Whitman from the Song of Myself, section 26. Now I will do nothing but listen. To accrue what I hear into this song, to let sounds contribute toward it. I hear bravuras of birds, bustle of growing wheat, gossip of flames, clack of sticks cooking my meals. I hear the sound I love, the sound of the human voice. I hear all sounds running together, combined, fused, or following. Sounds of the city and sounds out of the city, sounds of the day and night. Talkative young ones to those that like them, the loud laugh of work people at their meals, the angry bass of disjointed friendship, the faint tones of the sick, the judge with hands tight to the desk, his pallid lips pronouncing a death sentence, the heave yo oh of stevedores unlading ships by the wharves, the refrain of the anchor lifters, the ring of alarm bells, the cry of fire, the whirr of swift, swift streaking engines and hose carts with premonitory tinkles and colored lights, the steam whistle, the solid roll of the train of approaching cars, the slow march played at the head of the association marching two and two. They go to guard some corpse, the flag tops are draped with black muslin. I hear the violoncello, tis the young man's heart's complaint. I hear the keyed cornet, it glides quickly in through my ears, it shakes mad sweet pangs through my belly and breast. I hear the chorus. It is a grand opera, and, ah, uh, this indeed is music. This suits me. A tenor, large and fresh, as the creation fills me. The orbic flex of his mouth is pouring and filling me full. I hear the trained soprano. What work with hers is this? The orchestra whirls me wider than Uranus flies. It wrenches such ardors from me. I did not know I possessed them. It sails me, I dab with bare feet, they are licked by the indolent waves. I am cut by bitter and angry hail, I lose my breath, steeped amid honeyed morphine, my windpipe throttled in fakes of death, at length let up again to feel the puzzle of puzzles, and that we call being. Thank you, Walt Whitman. Wonderful, the whole thing, song of myself, if you don't know it or haven't visited it in some time. Paul Ann Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N, Appetite. Pale gold and crumbling with crust, mottled dark, almost bronze, pieces of honeycomb lie on a plate. Flecked with the pale paper of hive, their hexagonal cells leak into the deepening pool of amber. On your lips, against palate, tooth, and tongue, the viscous sugar squeezes from its chambers, sears sweetness into your throat until you chew pulp and wax from a blue city of bees. Between your teeth is the blown flower and the flower's seed. Passport pages stamped and turning. Death's officious hum. Both the candle and its anther aflame. Your own yellow hunger Never say you can't take this world into your mouth. Beautiful. Thank you, Pauline uh, Pedersen. That's a new new poet to, to me, new poem. This is a fragment I came across, but I, I cannot find the source of this. My dear friend Wayne Muller, author of A Life of Being, Having and Doing Enough, speaks of the courage to see what's whole beneath what's broken. The French novelist and Nobel laureate Henri Gide also says, quote, if you go deeply enough into the personal, you reach the universal. A universal wholeness waits beneath our brokenness, the way a torn seed pod lets all its seeds drop through its tear to germinate the earth. A good deal of our suffering comes from not going deeply enough into the personal to make it through, and so... We get stuck between the surface and the deep. Often the pain of being stuck makes us afraid to go deeper, which is exactly what we need to do in order to restore our inner health. So when stuck, we need to ask ourselves, am I leaning through my brokenness enough to be touched and restored by the wholeness of life? Yes. 
Mark Nepo, living in the freshest chamber of the heart. Our ability to find something to love and to love again for the first time depends greatly on how we resolve and integrate where we've been before. A great model for us exists in the chambered Nautilus, an exquisite shelled creature that lives along the ocean floor. The Nautilus is a deep-sea form of life that inches like a soft man in a hard shell, finding his prayers along the bottom. Over time, it builds a spiral shell, but always lives in the newest chamber. The other chambers, they say, contain a gas or liquid that helps the Nautilus control its buoyancy. Even here, a mute lesson in how to use the past. Live in the most recent chamber and use the others to stay afloat. Can we, in this way, build strong chambers for our traumas. Not living there, but breaking our past down till it is fluid enough to lose most of its weight. Can we internalize where we've been enough to know that we are no longer living there? When we can, life will seem lighter. It's not by accident that the Nautilus turns its slow digestion of the bottom into a body that can float. It tells us that only time can put the past in perspective And only when the past is behind us and not before us can we open enough and empty enough to truly feel what is about to happen. Only by living in the freshest chamber of the heart can we love again and again for the first time. Mark Nepo, thank you. I've read this uh, many times before. It's it's from his book of Awakening, an incredible book, uh, which takes you day by day through the year of his uh, musings and Uh, Yeah, inspirations. Thank you, Mark Nepo. Always. All right. Well, I have some questions for you, for all of us, about living deeply. I'm wondering, what do you think or feel just hearing the words and the invitation to, quote, live deep? How and where are you living deeply in your life? What has your experience been of that? What discoveries have you made? I'd like to know that. How and where do you want to be living this way? Or seeking to go ever deeper inside or around yourself, maybe with others? What's preventing you from choosing or allowing yourself to go there? Who or what is a great model or touchstone of it in your immediate world, among your friends or elsewhere? Do you sense society at large needs to regain its depth? If so, what would you recommend be done to get it back to some serious deeperness, to a wiser foundation? Well, as you're pondering those things... Uh, Let me relay this, some recent gleanings of mine. In my role as guide in the poetosphere, I've had various conversations with people I call, quote, deeper well-dwellers. Ones, as I say on our website, who walk among us can be found all over, people of the everyday, but ones living, engaging, creating, or expressing more deeply, more passionately, who show us it's possible to go deeper. Well, numerous things they have to say uh, are to me all greatly related to this theme of ours today, this opportunity, this possibility. And here are just a few of those to share with you before we get to some other um, people's uh, sendings. A rightly valued teacher and writer from the South Fork of Long Island said this, Who am I when I take away my profession? When I take away my religion? When I take away my birthplace and my tradition? When I take away my family, when you strip these layers away and get to the point where you realize you're not even your body, that that doesn't even completely define you. When you get down to the core of what's really going on, it takes time to get people to that point because most of the time folks will come to me with something in their life story that's problematic that they want to work through and we have to move through that first and then you touch into the more transcendental dimension of what's going on. Thank you, Mark. Mark Matusik, Mark Matusik, M-A-T-O-U-S-E-K dot com. Doing some wonderful work out there. 
and workshops. And then from an accomplished artist, scientist, and inventor, Harvey, in New York City, who said, connect deeply with the world around you, not just the parts that seem comfortable or familiar, to satisfy yourself that you're doing something meaningful. That takes some real listening to yourself and others and honesty. So I always encourage people to take such opportunities. Thank you, Harvey. And from uh, Orian Lee, a longtime educator and mentor in British Columbia, I loved your provocative question, Colin, on wilder aliveness, and was even coming across that as a teenager when I was around 12 when my aunt started taking me to the opera. It was just incredible. After living in a Canadian suburb where everybody was unexpressive, the passionate expression in the opera singers, and my sixth grade teacher was an opera singer. So I went, where does that live? How does one live a life like that? I didn't know I was begging the question, but I certainly was making sure I didn't settle for anything less than that. Thank you, Orion Lee. And uh, one more from Chris, a beautifully humble and soulful awakener up in Vermont, who said this, We need time and heartbreak and excitement and adventure and then some disaster altogether before maybe we have gained a little more perspective about what depth means and how we draw upon it. Thank you, Chris, for that. Well, to let you know, speaking of the deeper well dwellers, that subscribers, all members of the Poetosphere, monthly or yearly, have access to all these deeper well dweller conversations uh, among all the other content there. Several dozen uh, of those to date and many more coming uh, ongoingly, all of them engaging, all thought and feeling provoking, all inspiring in, in very uh, immediately relatable ways. And you can even join just for a month and get your feet wet there, get your senses wet, get into some of those conversations. I invite you into that. So let's wind out our call and response segment right here. Some of these, uh, the things I, I got, a few other things from listeners that I queried. Uh, two voice clips for us. Let me, let me tee those up for us. One from Paul and Susan and then one from B here in Rhode Island. Paul and Susan in Cape May, New Jersey on, down the coast. Hello, Paul. So you emerged from the rainstorm, and you have some thoughts for me and the show on deep, deeper living, eh? Live deep. Live, yes. So my, it was a very deep subject because I didn't know if, if it really covers where my journey is going in retirement, living deeply. Yes. And I've, I've noticed an act of humility in it. Because everything's very different now. Because now I'm not going to work. Now I'm like planning to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're planning not to do what you were doing. Yes. Exactly, and that comes to a, a a lifestyle change, and that's why just the phrase itself, I'm not really familiar with it. So that's why it gave me a little bit of apprehension to give you any thoughts now. Susan was talking about the changes in our life here as retirees, you know, where we're doing a lot of, um, because of my health condition, I'm doing, we, we're doing this thing called chakra bowls. Have you ever heard of this? No. Okay. Well, basically it's a, um, it's a sound meditation where a woman has these bowls. Oh, yes, like like singing bowls and, oh, yes, Tibetan bowls, that sort of thing. Yes, bowls, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. And what she does is, is that she smudges the room and she she works on your, what's called your chakra. Yes. And your chakra they, and your third eye. Yes. And this, we've been doing this at the, it's amazing in this county, in this area of South Jersey, that their libraries have so much to do for every age. 
but you can do you can make your own jewelry you can do a charcuterie board you can other than just reading and you know just reading at a library and one of them is breathing meditation with this woman who is kind of scary part clairvoyant and she's uh very big into into crystals and healing so we've been doing that for a couple of weeks to work on my breathing skills because of my lungs so deeper, and deeper, relaxing. deeper breathing deeper breath- and, yes. and deeper inhabiting of self through the sound meditations and exactly. this, mm-hmm. this vista that's opened up for you, uh, uh, it's an opportunity, right? It's freeing you, the retirement from the, all that other activity, freeing you exactly. to, to live, well, basically any way that you choose to live. And, right. and obviously part of what I, uh, my work is about, the poetosphere is about, uh, my own life is about, is there's every day is an opportunity and every season part of our life is an opportunity to go more deeply into ourselves uh, right. in a sense of discovering and expressing and deeply into the world, right, in right. terms of how we relate with each other, how we relate with the outer world, especially nature. So to me, there's so many uh, possibilities for living more deeply in just in a day, in an hour, in a moment. Uh, right. And, and so for someone like you who was so caught up and having to be caught up in your work with, um, yes, you may have immersed yourself deeply in that work. I think you did. Uh, I did. and, and so now you, you can, you can take the same skills of immersion that you already have and right. use them in this new phase of your life. You know what's funny when when I first saw what you were quoting, you know what I thought of? I swear because you and I have musical theater background, I could I thought of the musical "Stop the World, I Want to Get Off." <laughs> I really did. I thought to myself, now that's an interesting way of thinking that you're in such a hustle bustle. Mind state. Some people don't get to live deeply enough and live their dreams because they are stuck in the rat race of life. Yes. You know, and that's, see, some people can say, I envy the nomad because he is nowhere, he doesn't have to settle in one spot, and the nomad can be wherever they want to be. And if they don't like it, they can just transient themselves. But I was always an anchor. Always, you know, from the age of 16, working, you know? Yes. So I think that that's, I think it's, my living deeply is now I'm trying to learn how to be freer. Yes. And take, take real risks and chances. I mean, Susan's very big on, hey, let's, let's, let's go out to lunch. In other words, there's more life than work, work, work. Of course, oh, absolutely, a- absolutely. And I think that life well lived is goes beyond the status quo of what's expected of every adult. Well, also, also think of the, think of life as layer cake, and if you're just yes. eating the top layer, right? You, you, you could the work. Let's just say the work is one of the layers, but you're not eating all the layers. Well, you're not getting the whole no. cake. You're not getting the whole thing. Yes. We're going to the, the last drive-in theater, and we're taking the dog to the Delcy Drive-in Theater one night. Yes. Just to say we went there. Yes. Yes, I you love know, that. This is the stuff that we're doing now. Well, this is so relevant, you know, your own lives to, and, and many like you, uh, it's so relevant to so many out there uh, who who have Choices they can make, even if their lives are, are full of work, right? They can still, they still have room to make choices to go deeper, uh, or more expansively, right? Into their days, into the, their relationships, no matter what their story is. Everybody does have at least a slice of time and they can put themselves in front of the television and sort of be mindless. That's okay. No judgment. Just, but what if you put that into something that deepened you or expanded you or enlightened you? Yeah. So, and you live that way. And, and, and so Paul is saying, and I love this is that he's on the precipice of 
being able to being able being free to make all kinds of choices, whatever those are, and, and, and obviously the best kind he can make that have nothing to do with a boss telling him <laughs> how, how to apply himself. Exactly. So I'm, 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 this is wonderful. I mean, this is exactly what I was hoping, uh, you, you okay. could, you this could add to the mix. This isn't so funny. The fact is that there's the proverbial bucket list, but I don't have one. <laughs> yes, yes. Maybe you don't need one, Paul. Maybe you don't need one. All right. Thank you, Paul and Susan, for that. Very good. Very good. Uh, more than I could have asked for. So, okay, then now I have one more, then we'll, then we'll carry on. This is from BN here in Rhode Island. To live deep, it's a remembrance. It's learning to pause. And when you pause, your senses come into alignment. You can be even out walking. And if you can pause inside, even when you're moving, you start to feel the sun hitting your shoulders. Or you hear a sound that's familiar. Or you sense the breeze on your face. For a long time, I thought I had to read about it and learn it. But you don't. You just have to pause. And it all comes in. At first, slowly. And then in extraordinary ways. Love. Thank you so much. That is beautiful and so true. So true. All right. Well, on, on we go. Thich Nhat Han, the Vietnamese Buddhist, um, whose words uh, will always resonate, you know, even though he's physically gone. He said, if you look deeply into the palm of your hand, you will see your parents and all generations of your ancestors. All of them are alive in this moment. Each is present in your body. You are the continuation of each of these people. He also had these words. At any moment, you have a choice that either leads you closer to your spirit or further away from it. One of mine by the Delaware River, Frenchtown, New Jersey, early New Year's Eve 2016, by the Dusk Deep Brook. Violet blue water runs under a cloud of bamboo that billows over the bank of the Dusk Deep Brook, under the bridge under my feet, toward the river of never the same twice that flows over my shoulder, carrying away the last of the old year and bringing in the fresh beginnings of the new. November 2016, Depth Finder. Going down like a naked pearl diver in a greater breath into jade and sapphire waters, into an undersea of living treasures of the body, heart, soul, showed me how much more deeply I could go inside another, inside myself, how much more deeply I could dive, love, and be loved. Think of all the deeper layers of nature, often invisible or revealed under changing conditions like the tides or storms or the seasons. This is called under wood in winter. Under wood in winter waits spring. Dr. Oliver Sacks, wonderful writer and figure. This is from his book, Island of the Colorblind. Very interesting book. Quite fantastic, actually. In there, he said, The sense of deep time brings a deep peace with it, 
a detachment from the time scale, the urgencies of daily life. Seeing these volcanic islands and coral atolls and wandering above all through this cy- cycad forest on Rota has given me an intimate feeling of the antiquity of the earth and the slow, continuous processes by which different forms of life evolve and come into being. Standing here in the jungle, I feel part of a larger, calmer identity. I feel a profound sense of being at home, a sort of companionship with the earth. Thank you, Oliver Sacks. Joe Paddock, one's ship comes in. I swear my way now will be to continue without plan or hope, to accept the drift of things, to shift from endless effort to joy in, say, that robin, plunging into the mossy shallows of my bird bath and splashing madly till the air shines with spray. Joy it will be, say, in Nancy, pretty in pink and rumpled T-shirt, rubbing sleep from her eyes or joy even in just this breathing, free of fright and clutch, knowing how one ship comes in with each such breath. Thank you, Joe Paddock. That's from his collection, Dark Dreaming, Global Dimming. May Sarton, uh, from her collected poems, 1930 to 1993, The Work of Happiness. I thought of happiness how it is woven out of the silence in the empty house each day, and how it is not sudden, and it it is not given, but is creation itself like the growth of a tree. No one has seen it happen, but inside the bark, another circle is growing in the expanding ring. No one has heard the root go deeper in the dark, but the tree is lifted by this inward work, and its plumes shine, and its leaves are glittering. So, happiness is woven out of the peace of hours and strikes its roots deep in the house alone. The old chest in the corner, cool waxed floors, white curtains softly and continually blown as the free air moves quietly about the room. A shelf of books, a table, and the whitewashed wall. These are the dear familiar gods of home, and here the work of faith can best be done. The growing tree is green and musical. For what is happiness but growth in peace? The timeless sense of time when furniture has stood a life's span in a single place. And as the air moves, so the old dreams stir the shining leaves of present happiness. No one has heard thought or listened to a mind, but where people have lived in inwardness, the air is charged with blessing and does bless. Windows look out on mountains, and the walls are kind. Thank you, May Sarton. The work of happiness. Tony Hoagland, please don't. Tell the flowers. They think the sun loves them. The grass is under the same simple-minded impression about the rain, the fog, the dew. And when the wind blows, it feels so good they lose control of themselves and swab-toggle wildly around, bumping accidentally into their slender neighbors. Forgetful little lotus-eaters, solar-powered hydroholics, drawing nourishment up through stems into their thin green skin, high on the expensive chemistry of mitochondrial explosion, believing that the dirt loves them, the night, the stars, reaching down a little deeper with their pale albino roots, all dizzy Gillespie with the utter sufficiency of everything. They don't imagine lawnmowers, the four stomachs of the cow, or human beings with boots who stop to marvel at their exquisite flexibility and color. They persist in their soft-headed hallucination of happiness. But please don't mention it. Not yet. Tell me, what would you possibly gain from being right? Thank you, Tony Hoagland, from her collection, Application for Release from the Dream. Greg Miller, River. A loon dives in the swollen river. It followed the river first. The town lies between it and canals diverted from the river. The beak of the loon is orange its wingspan broader than a duck's. My father's legs were swollen. His once thin ankles barely fit his shoes. His heart no longer fed his body. Toxins and liquids began to drown him. His silly doctors didn't see he couldn't breathe. 
My father took me to the river. We fished for bass and bluegill, sunfish, cats, fat suckers, their lips like suction cups. We put back. Too many little bones to catch and make you choke. I no longer want to go fishing. I don't even want to play in the water. The boat here has no oars. The current is too swift. In the dark, teenagers discover their body together. The body feels like a prison. I kneel by my father's stapled body. He suctions thick liquid. Uh, he suctions thick liquid from his lungs. He coughs to clear them. It hurts. He wants more air. He wants to live. The heart's valves, parachutes, opening with an, with oxygen to feed the body's healing. A tube empties the chest cavity. He excretes liquids and poisons. His shocked kidneys come to life. His stunned heart beats. His lung opens again. He eats. He poops. He walks. He wants to go home. On the phone, I catch my sister talking, taking him home. It's snowing. It's cold. My brother and mother help him climb the stairs. I walk down the path by the shallow canal. I see a falcon fishing. The power plant breathes, steam. I hope the wind won't singe me. I come to the falls where a little dog barks and bounces. Hello. His owner smiles and greets me. In the church of St. Lawrence, I kneel. I give thanks. My heart jumps. Wonderful. Greg Miller from his collection Watch. New to me. Very good. Um, David White has talked about deeper friendship. Um, this is from his book of Essays, Consolation. Superb book. I'd love to share this part, this with you. No matter the medicinal virtues of being a true friend or sustaining a long, close relationship with another, the ultimate touchstone of friendship is not improvement, neither of the other nor of the self. The ultimate touchstone is witness, the privilege of having been seen by someone, and the equal privilege of being granted the sight of the essence of another, to have walked with them and to have believed in them, and sometimes just to have accompanied them for however brief a span on a journey impossible to accomplish alone. David White, yes, deeper friendship and also deeper, the deeper love we can enter and, and experience of all kinds. And um, that we can see, especially in love, uh, into others, the, the deeper insides of others. This is a love poem from, of mine from a time in Germany at the Gusthaus Ludorf in Mecklenburg in West Pomerania, Germany, uh, March 2015. Um, on that, the kinds of beautiful worlds you can behold deeply inside another. This is uh, called Inside You, for C-H. Deep inside you is a luminous blue grotto, sun-swept, wind-swept seas, groves of ocean grasses undulating, meditating in slowest motion, hidden orchards ripe with late-summer rays, shadows, succulent fruits, towering cloud banks, brilliant white, brushed with violet, northern lights, fire, fireworks, firelight. Deep inside you are virgin springs, cisterns, cenotes, sources, clusters of flowers that open, close, perfume, ever bloom, clusters of stars that shimmer in from unknown constellations, Silk-lined passages, soft petaled entrances, rare places to behold, be held, and folded. Halls, chambers, corners, a play with mysterious felt melodies, harmonies, delirious rhythms, reveries. Places of deep joinings, enjoinings, pourings, purifying. All inside you. From Morristown, New Jersey, January 2017, a revealing, the elixir of life, I found, can bring to light the secret of the al the elixir of life, the dancing water, alchemist through time, from the far to near east, Egypt, India, and Europe were seeking, the deep love of nature, the deep love of life, the deep love of self, the deep love of another. I've tasted it truly before. We'll drink of it fully again. 
when another rare soul blooms in the garden of my heart. So in talking about deeperness, we're deeply living. What about living in the shallows? Mention that. I came across various pieces about that. Speaking of this kind, that kind of life, this kind of a life one could lead, uh, and one maybe wants to uh, leave in the shallowerness. This is from Dr. Tony Ferretti, Shallow Living. What does it mean to live in the shallow? Do you ever find yourself just going through the motions of life? We're often so busy that we forget to be still, reflect, and meditate on life. Sometimes we're so consumed by life's demands that we forget to breathe. Living in the shallows may be coasting through life on autopilot without full engagement. Often people remain observers of life instead of active participants and sometimes even numb themselves to avoid experiencing hardship or being fully connected in relationships. If we want greater depth in life, we'll need to get dirty and fully experience the ups and downs of normal life. Start by focusing on sharing more openly and deeply with others both the good and bad times. Find a quiet time. Maybe start with five or ten minutes during the day to meditate, pray, or be still so you can focus on what happened today. Being vulnerable and allowing others into your struggles, fears, and insecurities can deepen your connection and strengthen your relationships. Skip shallowness and live deeply with others. Yes, agreed, agreed. It's another piece. I won't get into it right now, but it's uh, from believeinmind.com, How to Stop Being Shallow, uh, Steps for a Meaningful Living. Similar, similar. But I will talk about... Uh, Cultivating uh, your passions and curiosity, which will take you deeper. And I had a conversation uh, for a blog I was doing years back. Uh, it's still out there, actually. All, all, all of those pieces, among others, at 10 owls, T-E-N-O-W-L-S dot blogspot dot com. Uh, the title of this one was Searching for the Giant Squid, a conversation about curiosity with Steve Burnett. It's also actually in a deeper well-dweller conversation in the Poetosphere um, more recently. Uh, wise words from the front lines. That's sort of the subtitle of this. Well, I asked him, and I'll just share uh, a Q&A, a a little bit of it. What is curiosity for you? He said, it's the world's greatest gift to us. It transcends race, religion, time, and culture, and the biases that divide us. It causes us to look beyond the hill and intrigues us to go there. And once we're there, it allows us to see highly original things. The new truths we discover out of curiosity can be so powerful and brought back and shared as stories or science. They help us in our communities and educational institutions evolve and thrive. And I said then, is curiosity a natural or a learned quality? He said, you look at a child, a three-year-old on the beach. How? When they bend over as the tide recedes and see their reflection in the water. We see in their eyes how magical and wonderful the world is to them. Well... Everyone is born looking at the world without preconceptions. All children are full of pure wonder. This is where our wisdom begins, in a state of wonder. I said, I believe this is a place, a state of being we can refine, that we can return to as people, and, as, and, and why does it stop or get arrested, and how do you rekindle it? He said that it stops because people get programmed not to wonder, but to operate it in, in a, quote, acceptable way. I, I think some people... As they get older, also get tired and fall into ruts. But there are many ways to reignite our sense of curiosity and, and imagining. It's so, so true. Uh, and you could read the rest of that uh, at that uh, spot I mentioned. But uh, he ends it by saying, uh, that part by saying, reevaluating the meaning of life is part of the natural process of development, of looking at who we are in the great scheme of the human condition. Thanks again out to him. Um, Rob Bresney, author, um, you know, I was thinking about poetry, that is how it has helped me deepen into my beingness and my life, um, and I've witnessed that uh, inspire others likewise, um, uh, among other highly expressive arts. Um, Rob Bresney said, many of us don't always know what we feel. We may have a vivid sense that we feel something, but we're not sure what it is. That's why musicians, writers, actors, and other creative people play such a crucial role in our emotional lives. Their work can help us articulate the enigmas fermenting within us. Yes, and John O'Donohue, the philosopher, poet, the Irish um, man. Uh, This is from Voice of the Poet from his book, Beauty. 
amazing book, Rediscovering the True Sources of Compassion, Serenity, and Hope. Poetry is where language attains its greatest precision and richest suggestion. The poem is a shape of words cut to evoke a world the reader can complete. The poem is shaped to enter and inhabit forgotten or not yet discovered alcoves in the reader's heart. How about that? Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Belongs in a book called Beauty. Uh, David Hilton, poet, translator, and Chinese literature scholar, in uh, his book, Awakened Cosmos, the Mind of Classical Chinese Poetry, an inquiry into poetry as spiritual practice, lends through the life of Tu Fu, T-U-F-U, man of uncommon depth and breadth of spirit who lived as an impoverished wanderer through a civil war in the 8th century to become China's greatest poet. Poetry is the cosmos awakened to itself. Narrative, reportage, explanation, idea, language is the, is the medium of self-identity, and we normally live within that clutch of identity, identity that seems to look out at and think about the cosmos as if from some outside space. But poetry pairs language down to a bare minimum, thereby opening it to silence, and it is there in the margins of silence that poetry finds its deepest possibilities. For there it can render dimensions of consciousness that are much more expansive than that identity center, primal dimensions of consciousness as the cosmos awakened to itself. At least this is true for classical Chinese poetry, shaped as it is by Taoist and Chan Zen Buddhist thought into a form of spiritual practice. In its deepest possibilities, its inner wilds, poetry is the cosmos awakened to itself, and the history of that awakening begins where the cosmos begins. Wonderful. Love that. I wanted to point you to Diane Ackerman's book, Deep Play. Um, and I'll save this for another time to share with you. But she, she talks about uh, focusing on a deeper and more transcendent kind of play, more rapturous and closer to ecstasy that helps us contact our hidden wholeness and may even be required for us to feel whole. It's an ecstatic form of play. It involves the sacred and holy, sometimes hidden in the most unlikely or humble places, she said. Yeah. So I encourage you to have a look at that book or certainly extracts from it. Yes. Um, and and by the, one more line from that, actually, she says, um, when you're doing that, when you enter that realm, to erase all memories and yearnings to be vigorously alive without self-awareness can provide a brief return to innocence. Yes. And Nick Cave, he said, the other quality is curiosity. If we look at people this way who do not share our values, they become interesting rather than threatening. As I've grown older, I've learned that the world and the people in it are surprisingly interesting and that the more you look and listen, the more interesting they become. Cultivating a questioning mind of which conversation is the chief instrument enriches our relationship with the world. Having a conversation with someone I may disagree with is, I have come to find, a great Life-embracing pleasure. Yes. Daniel Thiel, T-H-I-E-L, listening in deep space. We've always been out looking for answers, telling stories about ourselves, searching for connection, choosing to send out Stravinsky and Whale Song, which in translation might very well be our undoing instead of a welcome. We launch satellites, probes, telescopes, unfolding like origami, navigating geomagnetic storms, major disruptions, rovers with spirit and perseverance mapping the unknown. We listen through large arrays adjusted eagerly to hear the news that we are not alone. Considering the history at home, in houses, across continents, oceans, even in quests armed with good intentions, what one seeker has done to another... What will we do when we find each other? Love that. Thank you, Daniel Thiel. Terry Tempest Williams said, I take a deep breath and sidestep my fear and begin speaking from the place where beauty and bravery meet within the chambers of a quivering heart. Anais Nin, one more quote from her. We began with one. Uh, People living deeply have no fear of death. And 
And uh, let's come into our last uh, sharings and musings here, this last stretch for this time together, for this week. We spoke, Mark Nepo, about the Chambered Nautilus, and I have my own poem about that. This is from Watch Hill, Rhode Island, December 2020. In the Chambered Nautilus of the heart, of your heart, moving of its own accord through so many fathoms of life, of living, diving and ascending through joys and hopes, dreams, sorrows and discords, sometimes entering great depths, deeply secret and silent, often rising straight to the surface, becoming visible, beautifully palpable for others to see, feel, touch, be touched by, growing ever larger, ever fuller, even as we speak, inside your teeming sea of being. Yes, friends. La Habra, California, February 2017. Deeper presence means, happens, many fathoms below merely being here, simply showing up for. It's total immersion, connection, correlation, with each place or person you engage with. Nothing surface or shallow, only substance and transcendence through all your self-distractions, self-absorptions, where you bring, feel, and are felt as a deeper, freer, and clear as a mountain stream presence in each moment. Yes. Joseph Stroud, Ode to the Smell of Firewood. Late, when the stars open in the cold, I opened the door. The sea was galloping in the night. Like a hand from the dark house arose the intense perfume of firewood, a visible scent as if the tree were alive, as if it still pulsed, visible like a robe, visible like a broken branch. Overwhelmed by balsamic darkness, I went inside the house. Outside, the points of heaven were glimmering like magnetic stones, and the smell of firewood touched my heart like fingers, like jasmine, like memories. It was not the sharp smell of pines. It was not the cracked skin of eucalyptus. Nor was it the green perfume of vineyards, but something more secret, because that fragrance exists once only, once only, and there of all that lived in the world, in my own house by night, near the winter sea, there it was waiting for me, the smell of the deepest rose, the heart cut from the earth, and something entered me like a wave unloosed from time, And I was lost in myself when I opened the door to the night. Thank you, Joseph Stroud. Well, I'm a a big follower of uh, many different um, interesting things uh, that are resonant with me, um, including some numerology. And there's a woman named Christine Delory, D-E-L-O-R-E-Y, and she has creativenumerology.com. And I was looking at a weekly forecast from the year of I'm in, which is an eight year, uh, and it was for the week that we're in. And interesting that the it resonated with the theme of the program that we're doing because it said, if shallow rewards are what you seek, you will find them at the shallow end of life. However, this is a chance to swim further afield in order to stay afloat when you are out of your depth. Discard that competitive streak. It weighs you down and know the difference between a friend and an acquaintance. Make time for all that is important to you. Don't let anything distract you from what truly matters. That's good to words for me and maybe all of us. Thich Nhat Hanh once more, who said, a Teacher cannot give you the truth. The truth is already in you. You only need to open yourself body, mind, and heart, so that his or her teachings will penetrate your own seeds of understanding and enlightenment. If you let the words enter you, the soil and the seeds will do the rest of the work. Next to last, Mary Oliver poem, 
one of my great favorites of all, and one I live by at the end, you'll hear why, end of the end lines. Um, a summer's day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who was eating sugar out of my hand. Who was moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who was gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she shifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Thank you, Mary Oliver, and yes, friends, I know what I'm doing with mine. What are you doing or going to do with yours? And last for now, until we're together here again over these airwaves, and I hope you come again, soon again, maybe next week. This is from Watch Hill, Rhode Island, January 2021. Immersed is the idea, is the way. Immersing yourself in the sacred heart of everything, from the world of nature to the lives of people you know and love, letting the waters of mystery and beauty flow head to toe, heart to mind through you, fill and freshen you, being part of a greater flow, a deeper source, always there, always a gracing. Thank you again, friends, for leaning in here, for thinking and feeling in, for sharing this deepening time together. hope you did find it deepening. I'd welcome hearing your experience of this show, Live Deep, or of others you've heard here, and how you've enjoyed or appreciated them, been touched or sparked by them. I invite you to freely share this one out to your circles or the whole Floating Poetry playlist. If you valued this broadcast or others here, or all of this work, I would greatly welcome any contribution you'd like to make as a thank you in return, whatever the value is for you. This series is wholly listener-supported as and when donations do come in to support me. Every gift adds a boost as I make and host these programs to engage and inspire you and others. If you are making a gift, thank you very much. You can do that by Venmo to fivefold, F-I-V-E-F-O-L-D at pipeline.com or by PayPal to the same email. Or you can simply mail a check along to me to P.O. Box 1032, Westerly, Rhode Island, 02891. Or contribute through the Donate tab at thepoetorialist.com. Is there any theme you'd like to see a future show on? Send me a note. Colin at thepoetosphere.com. Meanwhile, you can hear all these broadcasts online, on YouTube, currently on the Floating Poetry playlist, and ultimately on other leading platforms. The broadcasts come to you through the Poetosphere, the oasis of possibility that I'm guiding, which you can explore as a visitor or join as a subscriber by the month or the year. And I, I encourage you to see what it's about. Get a sense of the beautiful community of possibilitarians there, the trove of deeper well-dweller conversations I spoke of earlier, and much more. And to make joining, uh, I would say, even more attractive, I've made month and year-long subscriptions available to everybody through the early spring. So uh, till May 20th, 2024, you can have a first-time membership at just 114 a year instead of 190 or 14 monthly instead of 19. You'll see uh, each code to use right on the site through the Join Us tab, thepoetosphere.com. You might enjoy a recently released interview that I gave with the soulgoddesslife.com group in the UK. You can find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. The title is, quote, Embracing the Poetics of Life, A Journey into Aliveness. I think it's a very good interview. Meanwhile, I hope you'll lean in here soon again. Till then, dear listeners, keep living deeply if you are. You know the beautiful rewards of it. Otherwise, go deeper. Go headlong and heartlong. Take yourself down more fathoms, more layers of that cake of life, 
to feel or even more so into and revel in the greater waters of possibility inside and around you, the currents of wholeness and aliveness ready to be discovered and treasured there. Begin to see how your life can become ever more vibrant and vivid, all the more expressive and expansive. Goodbye for now, and good spirits.